Overwatch is a class-based game, and with this wide of a roster of playable characters, some are guaranteed to be more annoying than others. Some of the abilities aren't annoying, but just feel bad or underwhelming, and some are just hilariously stupid. In today's video, I wanted to share a few ideas I had for a while now for potential changes, or should I say fixes to those abilities. My ultimate goal is to create the most balanced and fun gameplay for all the heroes I I will be talking about, and what is more important, I would love to hear what you guys think about the current state of those abilities I'm about to mention in the comments below. So with this very short intro out of our way, let's begin. The never-ending debate, and the most unfair crowd control ability in the entire game. There have been many attempts to fix the entire Roadhog character, but the main ability that is causing all the crying and complaining has been barely touched. What I would love to suggest here is adding what in my opinion could fix the entire hero, and possibly satisfy both the Roadhog players and the rest of the player base. The main issues that come with this ability are from my experience two main factors. One of them is how easy this ability is to land, and the second one is how much it does for its hilariously short cooldown. To tackle the first issue, I would love to see Roadhog's hook having an arcing trajectory. Similar to Orisa's sphere, it's not flying in a straight line, which not only makes it more realistic, but also gives it a slightly harder challenge to land, especially at long range. Roadhog's hook not being a global ability, thankfully, could also learn from this, and with this additional stat, not only would it be a little bit more challenging to land the hook as aiming projectiles affected by gravity is harder than a straight one, but this would also require more precision from the hog player, and therefore landing a hook would no longer be a 100% chance as soon as you make eye contact with the hog. Let's also not forget about the second part of the hook problem, that is its effectiveness compared to its cooldown, so logically I would make the wait time a little bit longer but in exchange, I would give a little bit more damage back to the hook itself, so in case it breaks with the loss of line of sight, which might happen more often with the arcing nature of the new hook, especially in scenarios where you try to pull off someone from the high ground, it's not completely useless. <laughs> The current translocator encourages a very boring and cowardly gameplay from the Sombra player. Its only current upside is that it creates a very unique gameplay for the Sombra player. But does it mean it's good? Yeah, it does not. The player is already equipped with the best possible stealth tool possible, that is her infinite invisibility which already creates the very accurate simulator of an absent father, so stacking it up on top of the free escape is just over the top for me. Sombra's SMG without a hack can be already deadly enough if you catch an unprepared support in the right moment, which only requires your invisibility, so I would love to see the translocator be utilized more aggressively and instantly, and to achieve this I suggest making it teleport on impact. Similar to Ender Pearls from Minecraft, this gives Sombra a better flank ability and it also allows her to escape sticky situations, but it's not getting her across the map for basically free. To help the Sombrero a little bit with this new attribute, I'd imagine her cooldown getting lowered by about 40% so it can be used more often, and also adding a little bit more projectile speed to the mix to make the translocator even more effective in aggressive all-ins, or simply making your escape quicker. This still sounds fair enough for me, as if the players want to hunt down the Sombra, after her successful assassination, they stand a fair chance and are left with a viable choice of chasing down the Sombra. With the current state of hers after your teammate dies and the Sombra dips, all you can do is act like nothing happened, and either quickly push or wait for your teammate to come back. If you want to know more about the Sombra changes, I would like to implement to the game if I could watch this video. The ability that has been untouched since the release of this hero, a complete invincibility in exchange of lack of any movement option, is surprisingly common across many video games. And what makes it absurd even more is that there is not a single person who enjoys this mechanic. There should be another way to punish a MA player that screwed up too much, and by that I mean give us the possibility to break through May's ice block. At the end of the day, it's just ice, so how hard can this be? If a huge minigun is not able to even scratch this monolith, then how does it break through barriers that are designed to block bullets? 
As I said, I also do care about keeping the balance intact, so a very generous health pool of the ice block that I suggest is about 700 HP. It's big enough to not be possible to break by a singular person, unless that person is a Disney Roomba, but it's weak enough that with team effort you can take down a May player that went significantly deeper than it should ever be allowed into the enemy territory. This also gives the enemy players anything they can actually do to counter this ability, and as stated by the developers of Overwatch, they want this game to play like more complicated rock paper scissors, but it doesn't make sense if there is nothing that can counter this thing. So I personally think this is the best solution. Don't forget that May has her ice wall as well at her disposal to get away even better. <laughs> This might sound very strange at first, but I think Bastion should shoot out two grenades in quick succession, one after another upon double clicking. Of course, to get all the confusion out of the way, the damage should be split equally 50-50 between the two nades. So what is the main purpose of this idea? Inspired by Junkrat with his double charged mines and Reinhardt with two fire strikes, in my opinion giving Bastion the similar two charges approach would benefit him very well. With this, the Bastion could be more mobile while still exchanging health points to gain that precious momentum, and with two nades the flank routes and mobility options are way more open. This in my opinion could encourage Bastion players to play a little bit more aggressively without sacrificing his damage potential from his nades too much. Bastion shouldn't be focused on his nade, but from my experience in most of the encounters the nade plays a gigantic role. Also Bastion missing a spot on his E ability, I think it wouldn't hurt to use this ability for a short speed boost that would last one second, and would be on on about 10 seconds cooldown. Why? Bastion sometimes lacks this tiny window of mobility, and to make Bastion actually killable with all of this overload, I suggest that Bastion, the longer he keeps firing, will slowly take more and more damage from all sources, so he isn't just melting everything from behind for free because he got on a flank across the entire map. This overheat of some sort will slowly ramp up after 3 seconds, 5% more damage taken, to 10% after 4 seconds, 15% after 5, and so on until he reaches full overheat after 10 seconds, where he is slowed and cools down for a moment disabling his primary weapon, just like his sister Orisa. So these are all the fun little changes that in my opinion result in more fun for both the people who play the changed heroes I mentioned and also the opposite side. Even the ice block case is reasonable in my mind as this makes the main player play more safe and stick to her team a little bit more, resulting in a healthier thinking player and a stronger team synergy. As I said, I I am eager to hear what is your guys opinion about those changes in the comments below, but for now that would be it from me, thanks for watching, have a lovely day, bye bye.